is uh, the last uh, doctor in this session, uh, Dr. Iman uh, Tohami, lecturer of uh, internal medicine and endocrinology, Cairo University. She will uh, deliver a talk about diabetes in the elderly. Could you please start? Thank you, my professor. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Uh, uh, it's my pleasure to be here uh, sharing this great event. Uh, today I'm going to talk about uh, diabetes in elderly and how it differs uh, from diabetes in younger adults. So let's start. According to ADA, the adjective uh, elderly describes people aged 65 or older. Diabetes is an important health condition for the aging population. Approximately one quarter of people over the age of 65 have diabetes and one half of older uh, adults have prediabetes. At the same time, older adults develop diabetes at a rate nearly three times higher than younger adults. The elderly have a unique biochemical, psychological, and social constitution. Their needs are different from those of younger adults. This implies that special care must be taken when evaluating and planning their nursing and management. So we can say that elderly with diabetes have disconnected features with different parts of physiology, different risks, and so you do need a different approach. So let's get started with, uh, this is a slide showing the pathogenesis and factors in interacting uh, in, the hyper in the pathogenesis of hyperglycemia in elderly. Hyperglycemia could be considered as an age-related disorder. Uh, this slide, uh, type 2 diabetes is by far the most prevalent form of diabetes in older adults, and it's an age-related disorder. Older adults are at a high risk of developing diabetes due to combined effects of genetic, lifestyle, and aging influences. This diagram shows several factors interacting and contributing to hyperglycemia through impairing beta cell secretion of uh, insulin in response to endogenous secretions, as well as reduce insulin sensitivity and promoting beta cell death uh, by inducing mitochondrial dysfunction, leading to gradually impaired glucose tolerance and eventually clinically manifest diabetes. So elderly people with diabetes are, at, uh, different, are exposed to different risks than younger adults. Vulnerable older adults with diabetes may be disproportionately at increased risk of microvascular and macrovascular complications due to potentially longer duration of the disease. These elderly with abnormal glucose metabolism may have less the organ reserve due to aging and comorbid illness. This could result in more abrupt and severe in the organ disease than what is seen among younger patients. Also, these elderly patients with uh, abnormal glucose metabolism are at higher risk of common geriatric syndromes, including frailty, cognitive impairment, dementia, urinary incontinence, traumatic falls and fractures, disability, as well as side effects of polypharmacy, which have an important impact on quality of life and may interfere with anti-diabetic treatment. That's why cognitive disorder, cognitive dysfunction and common geriatric syndromes can be considered as complication of diabetes as long as retinopathy, nephropathy, and cardiovascular disease. This diagram shows the interaction between uh, diabetes and geriatric syndromes, common geriatric syndromes. Actually, they set up a vicious circle. Diabetes can worsen functional and cognitive status of the elderly people, resulting in more worsening of diabetes control and a vicious circle. So elderly people with diabetes, they do need a different approach. To achieve appropriate balance between glycemic control and risk for complications, it's important to carefully assess and reassess patients' risks for worsening of glycemic control and functional decline through assessment of medical, psychological, functional, and social geriatric domains. And also, we show the screen for common geriatric syndromes. Uh, goals of management uh, of diabetes in elderly, first of all, controlling hyperglycemia as well as avoiding hypoglycemia. And beyond glycemic control, in parallel, we should go for reduction of cardiovascular risk, comprehensive geriatric assessment for early detection of mild cognitive impairment and dementia with management of coexisting medical conditions. In controlling hyperglycemia, large randomized trials of older, of older adults with diabetes have failed to show convincing cardiovascular benefit from intensive glycemic control. Actually, it was found that aggressive glucose lowering was associated with higher risk of hypoglycemia and early cardiovascular death, suggesting that aggressive glucose control may cause harm in this population. 
So there is no convincing evidence that all people with diabetes will benefit from intensive glycemic control. This table represents a framework considering treatment goals for, for glycemia, blood pressure, and dyslipidemia in elderly with diabetes. Goals for glycemic control as well as risk factor management should be based upon individuals' overall health, specifically serious comorbidities, cognitive function, and functional status as it impacts the life expectancy and risk of complications. Older adults who are otherwise healthy with few coexisting chronic illnesses and intercognitive function with functional status should have lower glycemic goals such as A1C blue, a, uh, blue seven and a half percent. And to achieve this goal, fasting and preprandial glucose should be between 150 to 160 milligram per deciliter. While those with multiple coexisting chronic illnesses, cognitive impairment, or functional dependence should have less intensive glycemic control, such as A1C between 8 or 8.5 percent. So glycemic goals for some older adults might reasonably be relaxed as part of individualized care. However, hyperglycemia leading to symptoms or risk of acute complications should be avoided in all patients. Hyperglycemia can cause increased dehydration, impair, impairment of vision or cognition, and increased risk of infection. While controlling hyperglycemia, we should act on avoiding hypoglycemia. Elderly with diabetes are at high risk of hypoglycemia for many reasons, including insulin deficiency, necessitating insulin therapy, progressive renal insufficiency, and age-related uh, decline in the secretion of glucagon, which is the most important counter-regulatory hormone to prevent hypo hypoglycemia. Also, cognitive uh, decline has been associated with increased risk of hypoglycemia. Elderly diabetics also are at risk of delayed recognition of hypoglycemia, as they may have more neuroglycopenic manifestations of hypoglycemia than uh, adrenergic manifestations resulting in delayed recognition. So, people, uh, so patients should be monitored for hypoglycemia, and glycemic targets and pharmacologic regimens may need to be adjusted to minimize the occurrence of hypoglycemic events. What's beyond glycemic control, cardiovascular risk reduction, lifestyle modification, and medical nutrition therapy? Although hyperglycemia control may be important in older individuals with diabetes, greater reductions in morbidity and mortality are likely to result from control of other cardiovascular risk factors rather than from tight glycemic control alone. So let's move to the pharmacologic therapy and precautions with glucose-lowering agents. Pharmacologic therapy must be individualized based upon patients' abilities and comorbidities. Oral and injectable agents with low risk of hypoglycemia are preferred in older adults. Also, over-treatment of diabetes is common, and older adults should be... Uh, over-treatment of diabetes is common in older adults and should be avoided. That's why... The intensification or simplification of complex regimens is recommended to reduce risk of complications. Also, we should consider costs of uh, care and insurance coverage when planning for uh, treatment plans to ensure uh, to reduce risk of cost-related non-adherence. Uh, this famous table of uh, pharmacological therapies uh, with anti-glycemic effect. Here I'd like to mention briefly that metformin can be used as initial therapy for older patients who do not have contraindications like renal impairment, unstable or acute heart failure, or at risk of hypoperfusion or hypoxemia. Sulfonylureas can be used with caution. Usually choose a short-acting sulfonylurea. Glyclozide is associated with, lower, with the lowest risk of hypoglycemia. DPP-4 inhibitors are useful, especially for frail elderly diabetics with high risk of hypoglycemia and hypoglycemia unawareness. Sodium glucose transporter inhibitors have been found to be beneficial for patients with heart failure and to slow progression of chronic kidney disease. However, in absence of uh, cardiovascular disease, the risks of dehydration, falls, and fractures may outweigh the benefits of uh, sodium glucose transporter inhibitors. TCDs generally are not preferred in older adults due to risks of fluid retention, weight gain, and increased risks of heart failure, macular edema, and osteoporotic fractures. While long-acting basal analogs are associated with lower frequency of hypoglycemia than intermediate-acting or pre insulin in this age group. In order to decrease, uh, as I mentioned earlier, tight glycemic control in older adults with multiple medical conditions is considered over-treatment and should be avoided. So in complex insulin regimen, just lowering insulin dose might not be adequate. We need simplification of insulin regimen. 
uh, to match uh, an individual self-management abilities. Regimen simplification by changing strategy to decrease complexity of treatment regimen through fewer administration times, fewer uh, finger stick readings, decrease the need for calculations such as insulin ca carbohydrate tissue calculations. What about monitoring and guidelines regarding monitoring of diabetes? Monitoring is usually necessary to achieve glycemic goals. Uh, recommendations the same for younger adults, twice yearly in older patients with uh, stable glycemic control, quarterly in patients whose therapy has changed or who are not meeting their glycemic goals. Uh, we m I should focus on uh, certain situations in which uh, A1C may not be accurate in elderly uh, population, such as anemia and other conditions that may impact red blood cells lifespan, like chronic kidney disease or chronic liver disease, or uh, recent acute illness or hospitalization. Uh, screening for complications, the same uh, guidelines or same recommendations for young uh, adults, monitoring recommendations, as well as screening for common geriatric syndromes. Screening for geriatric syndromes may be beneficial in selected patients, particularly when, identify, when identification and treatment may help achieve better glycemic control, especially when there is non-adherence with therapy, frequent episodes of hypoglycemia, and deterioration of glycemic control without obvious explanation. So our key messages, diabetes in older people is distinct from diabetes in younger people and the approach should be different. In older person with diabetes and multiple comorbidities and or frailty, strategies should be used to strictly prevent hypoglycemia. Start low and go slow is a good principle to follow when starting any new medications in an older adult. Finally, no two older people are alike and every older person with diabetes needs a customized diabetes care pl plan which works for one individual may not be the best course for treatment for another. Checklist, diabetes in the elderly checklist. Assess, individualize, avoid, select, and give. Five points to remember. Finally, thank you. Shukran.